Today, we are diving into the latest tech in the cycling world. From Apple's Vision Pro, a potential game changer or a dangerous distraction for cyclists to Richie's surprising return to rim brake bikes. Then there's Echo's bold claim of an eight watt aero benefit with a brand new redesigned pedal and cleat system that definitely has me intrigued, while Kotick has unveiled a new gravel bike proudly crafted right here in the UK. I've also found what might be the ultimate secondhand road bike bargain of the month. Let's dive in. Have you seen Apple's brand new state-of-the-art Vision Pro yet? It went on sale in the US over the weekend and it's been eye-opening to see some of the reviews and uses for the brand new device. But let's focus on the possible pros and cons for us cyclists. The Cathlon has embraced their technology already to create an immersive shopping experience that looks kind of cool. But on the negative is this video of a person driving a Tesla Cybertruck working on their Vision Pro, which really spooked me. Now, I'm all for new technology, but this looks downright dangerous. Distracted motorists are sadly a problem and a real issue for us cyclists as it is. And the way this device is being used right here doesn't look like it can make things any better at all. But in a more positive light, this headset could definitely take indoor cycling to the absolute next level, making virtual cycling properly immersive. Imagine riding up your favorite climb and look over the view around you, the mountains in the distance, and maybe literally stop at a cafe for a refreshment. Or how about wearing it when you're working on your bike? with step-by-step -step instructions as you bleed your brakes or replace the bar tape. Definitely make working your bike easier when you're constantly checking your phone or laptop for that YouTube video and have it in your display where you need it. And could it change how we watch and experience bike racing? Putting you right inside the pro peloton, right in the middle of the action would be pretty neat and definitely make watching Tour Flanders a more immersive experience. That's something I would love to see. Or how about wearing it outside on a bike? Now, there are practical issues like the weight and the battery pack and the limited runtime and did I mention the weight? But could you get a hit up display of your power output, the what you're doing, turn by turn directions, messages, all without looking down your handlebar at a tiny computer on your stem? So that could be pretty amazing, but the obvious downsides of weight, big device on your head, sweat issues, how it fits your helmet, and of course the price is not cheap at all. But maybe five to 10 years down the line, it might be a technology more of us cyclists are using in a positive way, whether indoors, outside, working on your bike, whatever it is. So interesting one, I can't wait to see how it's used and implemented over the years, but definitely something to watch if you are interested in new technology and how it's embraced in ways probably beyond how Apple have imagined. Richie is making rim brake bikes again. Yes, you heard me right. Want to say the rim brake? Well, good news, Richie has just announced it's a restart production of two road bikes in its range with rim brakes. It will bring back both the Road Logic and Road Logic breakaway steel frame sets after their production was shut down about four years ago. Both are made from triple butter steel and paired with a carbon fork with clearance for up to 30 mil wide tires. The Road Logic will cost you $1,600 while the breakaway is $2,300, perfect for traveling. So if you don't want to buy a new road bike with disc brakes, because most new bikes do have disc brakes, and you have a soft spot for steel, well here you go, two really good options. I've been lucky enough to ride a few Ritchie bikes over the years and they've always impressed. The Swiss Cross in particular, when I was at Road TC, really won me over. One of the silkiest smooth steel bikes I've ever ridden and it looks amazing as well. Really quite special then. Plus, there's the whole Tom Ritchie story as well, which you probably need to be of a certain age to understand and appreciate. So exciting news for sure, but will it start a new wave of brand new rim brake offerings in 2024 and beyond? Probably not, but I'm guessing Ritchie have realized the sort of people buying their bikes are still very happy to use rim brakes as a way for the brand to stand out in a saturated market. A lot of people rightly prefer the weight and simplicity of rim brakes, so nice to see a brand offer their choice. I can't think of another brand right now offering a brand new rim brake option. So if you love rim brakes, you hate disc brakes, this is the bike to support and go out and buy. 
Ecoy is a relative unknown clothing and accessory brand, but they've debuted a brand new pedal that has everyone talking about it. Why? Well, mainly because of a bold claim that the new pedal can reduce your aero drag by eight watts, which for a pedal is a massive statement. But what's more interesting to me than the aero benefit, which I don't mind actually, is how they not only design a new pedal, but also taking the entire cleat interface back to a drawing board. And the benefits here can be way more widely appealing than those eight watts. So what they've done is ditch the conventional three bolt cleat interface, which we all take for granted, for a brand new design that recesses the cleat entirely inside the shoe. Well, not inside, but inside the sole. So it's not sitting proud like a normal cleat and shoe design. And it's this unique design that gives the claimed aero benefits. By recessing the cleat inside the carbon sole of the shoe and that new long pedal it sits flush with the shoe, so you reduce all the clutter underneath the shoe and it's a very smooth airflow over the pedal. The stack height is also lower as well, just eight millimeters compared to a more typical 14 to 16 millimeters. And hopefully by putting that cleat inside the sole of the shoe, walking around off the bike is much, much easier than any cleat on the market right now, which is a real handicap to using clipless pedals on a road bike. When you get off, you're hobbling around, trying to slip over on your bum, whether at home, in the office, or in a cafe. So it does sound really interesting, but there is a big downside. You not only need new pedals, but new shoes as well. Now, Echo makes shoes, of course, and what we're keen to sell is shoes and pedals as a package, and that's fine if you like the shoes, but if you don't, they will have to open it up to other brands like Giro, Rafa, City, and so on, to allow potential cyclists to buy their favorite shoe brand with the new pedal. And that is a real challenge. The technology looks fantastic. Testing is being done in the Pro Peloton right now, but getting sales from us consumers is a real big challenge to make this possibly a new standard in the road bike world. And interestingly, it's funny that the three bolt cleat interface we all take for granted has been one of the most reliable standards in cycling since it was launched in about the 1980s. I'm honestly surprised nobody has done this sooner and looked at the pedal and the cleat design and thought there must be a better way. And this does look a better way. So let's see how it goes. And it could become a new standard in the next five, 10 or 20 years, or it could be a tech fail we talk about in the future. Uh, so let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Here's some great news if you want a locally made frame. UK bike brand Kotick has just announced a new version of its Escapade gravel bike and it's made right here in the UK. It's a small production run with frames made using Reynolds 853, the gold standard for steel tubing with frame made and painted just a short drive from the company's home in the Peak District. Now being made in the UK is a fantastic thing. I want more of this, but it does impact the price. A frame set is £2,000 compared to about £1,400 for a Fairlight Sakan, a similar bike made in Taiwan. So that's the price you pay for a frame made more locally. Or you can decide if that's a premium worth paying for a locally made frame. Personally, I love to see more companies bringing manufacturing closer to home, but are we willing as consumers to pay the higher prices we can expect to pay for brands that are doing manufacturing closer to home and making such investments in tooling and the skills and everything else you need to make a frame closer to home and not in the Far East. Now, I'm guilty of spending far too much time browsing for second-hand bikes, but last week I found an absolute gem of a bike that I have to share with you. A Canyon Ultimate CF SLX with Shimano Ortega 11-speed mechanical for just £1,375, and it looks like it's sold. No wonder the bike was an absolute bargain. I reckon it probably cost about £5,000 new uh, two, three, four years ago. A high quality carbon frame with high quality parts looks in really good condition and an absolute bargain if it's sold for as little as £1,375 and shows how good a deal you can get if you are prepared to buy a second hand bike. But sadly that bike is sold and it was too small for me anyway, but there are some good deals right now. This Tarmac SL6 for example, with mechanical Ultegra, it's had new cranks fitted after the recall and going for £1,750, which is much cheaper 
than the 12,000 the new SL8 I reviewed at the weekend will cost you. Still a fantastic bike, lightweight, aero, great handling, and a great paint job on the bike too. A real gem of a bike. Or how about this? A Super 6 Evo with rim brakes for just £1,500 with Ultegra Di2 and carbon fiber prime wheels. It's in my side too, and I am seriously, seriously tempted, but I can't be spending that sort of money right now. I've got bills to pay, but a fantastic bike shows how much of a bargain you can get if you buy secondhand and way cheaper than many new road bikes. Now, the last one I found for you guys, and I'm really spoiling you here, is a spanking Trek Amanda SLR with Duro Di2 and a 6.5 kilo weight, lighter than many 10K bikes on the market these days, but going for just £3,000. That is an absolute steal. Somebody buy a bike before I do. So let me know if you found any amazing secondhand deals by leaving a comment down below. And if you are intrigued about buying a secondhand road bike, then make sure you watch a video on my guide to the top tips for buying a used bargain. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.